So, you might be wondering how you're going to survive 2023. With the way the spot market is and everything, and the way freight rates are dropping. Uh, it's not looking good out there. But there is still hope yet. Uh, there are things you can do to protect your business, to protect your income. And uh, I'm going to try to cover a few of those things. Now, they might be difficult. They might involve uh, possibly putting your authority on hold. Uh, possibly changing operation, maybe getting a different truck, maybe pulling a different trailer, but uh, it's just what's going to have to be done if you really want to save your business and continue profiting in 2023. So uh, let's get at it. So we all want to try to survive 2023. Like I said uh, in the intro, that's uh, it's going to be a little difficult. Now, the biggest thing is most of us got hooked on that spot market freight and spot market freight was through the roof thanks to the big bug. The problem is the market's changed. The economy's changed and things have sort of took a turn for the worse, whether that be the war in Ukraine or certain political things that are out of our control within the government, um, not pointing any fingers. It's just the way it is right now. Uh, that being said, things that you can control is what you have to worry about. Whatever happens out there is going to happen. There's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. No amount of voting, no amount of calling your congressman, no amount of protesting or lack of, you know, the whole show up to New York uh, is going to matter it's it's not going to pay your bills it's not going to stop your truck from getting repoed it's it's not going to hit the reset button it's going to happen no matter what and you're going to have to pretty much rely on yourself you're going to have to make your own decisions now like i said before in a few other videos past the time to get out to wipe your hands clean and basically move your problems to somebody else has pretty much ended. Uh, the guys with $200,000 KWs that bought them just to look cool and and uh, Peterbilts and whatnot, uh, to be honest, almost anything, because prices just skyrocketed on everything. Uh, you're left holding the bag right now. And unless you already tried to sell your stuff six to eight months ago, maybe you know like right when the market started to dip most most of your buyers have already kind of got the gist that spot market's dead and trucking's not doing good right now so you're going to be stuck with that truck now depending on how much you owe and everything you might still be able to get out of it it might still be a better idea no matter how cool and how nice and comfortable it is and and everything and whatever amount of money and chrome you put into it, it might still be worth it to get rid of it. If you're, you know, no matter how nice and cool looking the truck is, if it's not making you money, what, what's worth, you know, having? That, that's, that's, that's it, you know. Why, why, why continue to stress out to keep that truck? If you, if you have some money in it, and you have it paid off or close to paid off and you think you can trade it in, try to trade it into a truck with a less payment. And when the market comes back, trade, sell that truck to, you know, raise raise the price on it, sell it to some other unwitting, uh, uh, unwitting new owner operator. You know, it might it might still be a good deal for him, but you know, the, uh, the eye of uh, the value of something is in the beholder or the buyer, I guess. Um, you might be able to sell it to him or, or her or what or whatnot uh so yeah that's a decision you might have to make get rid of the truck trade down trade down if you can that being said the same thing for the trailer if you can somehow knock your trailer payment down or get rid of it if you can afford to buy a trailer right now and get rid of that extra payment that's that's gonna be weighing on you every month or maybe a week uh, it depends depends what you're doing uh, knock it, knock it out of the park. The same thing with, uh, you know, let's see if you got hot spots that you don't really necessarily need. Um, you know, you might, yeah, you might have that 
Xbox over here and you might be wanting to play it and stuff but you know between the Xbox your hotspot payment and everything there's a couple hundred there's like a hundred bucks there knock that out you know you get rid of Netflix I know these are little little things but they eventually add up to a couple hundred bucks um, just look through the load boards that you're paying for too considering that freight is not the way it used to be you don't necessarily need 12 or 15 different load boards I, I've heard guys have a bunch whole bunch they go through they're all the same load right now they're all the same horrible rate don't don't pay for a bunch of them do what you gotta do same thing if you're paying for if you're if you're paying for a dispatch service and your rates have fallen go out on your own and dispatch yourself you're not going to really probably depending on the dispatch service you have you're not gonna they're not gonna do much better than you are they're pulling off the same board usually as you you know get rid of them I'm not I'm not vouching for all dispatch services but a good majority of them are just sprung up in the last two years and you know why because they wanted a piece of your pie and they got it so if you can learn how to dispatch yourself and learn this market you can do it yourself and save some money now on top of that let's see what else can we do toys at home I know a lot of guys uh, have been buying toys brand new pickup trucks brand new jet skis side-by-sides and stuff I uh, same thing with the truck you if you wanted to need to really needed to get rid of it and you started falling on hard times a little bit you probably should have done it 68 months ago to a year ago because I'm seeing side-by-sides out where I live you can pick one up uh, probably a 10 year old uh, Polaris 800 side-by-side -side, for like four or five thousand dollars those were going for about eight eight to ten just 10 year old or 15 year old Polaris side by side now like I said you can pick them up underneath five thousand dollars and they run and move and stuff um, so try to get rid of your toys if you don't owe too much on them or whatnot just just try to get rid of them though the, they're not gonna be making you money the trucks gonna be making you money so if you can get rid of that stuff first and still keep your nice Peterbilt or Kenworth or Volvo or whatever you whatever you fancy do it do it um, the second thing or no the fourth thing the fourth thing is try to get direct customers I know we've heard it a billion freaking times and uh, you know to your ears bleed just start making phone calls I don't mean calling Kroger and CNS Foods or uh, U.S. Steel, uh, the, uh, you know, depending on what market seg segment you're at, just pull up Google. Look at these little industrial parks, these little small industrial parks that have small um, cold storage facilities, uh, small machining shops, metallurgy, uh, fabrication, uh, cabinet making, whatever. Call them up say hey you know I would like to service you I, I, try to talk to them just get them on the phone uh, they're easier to get to usually than a lot of the megas because if you're trying to get to a, like a mega Kroger or CNS Foods or Kellogg's or, or whatnot one of these grocery warehouses you're just gonna get some answering service you're not gonna be able to get a hold of the actual shipping manager it's just not going to happen uh, those are all done they're ser usually searching or there's certain kind of emails and, and people that you get a hold of to get into places like that so like I said try to find one of these smaller facilities in these small industrial parks or warehouse districts preferably where around where you live or maybe a lane that you already run maybe you can connect the dots and bring something together so so maybe instead of running out somewhere for two dollars and sixty cents a mile and then having to come back at cost if you're lucky maybe you can come back for a dollar eighty two dollars a mile or something above cost or who knows you might have been coming back under cost just trying to pay for fuel try to do this that this this is something that, that could definitely greatly improve your business and I'm not saying try to go in there and undercut anybody but 
try to secure the best rate you can get. The best rate that actually makes you profit. And this is a this is still business. It's, it's cutthroat at times. It is what it is. But as long as you can offer a good service at a good price, and not be you know not do some of the stuff we see out here with some of these carriers that we see running freight that we don't know how they do it, but they do it. As long as you can still do that without crossing that threshold, you're golden. If there's anything you want to do, you don't want to jeopardize your authority. And you don't want to jeopardize your, the company you're running under, their authority and their business. You don't want to get on the phone and start cursing at these brokers. If you're, if you're, you know, you're not only representing your business and yourself if you're leased on to a carrier, you're, rep you're representing the carrier. You're representing everybody that works there. If they lose business because of you, you might put not only your out of, you know, yourself out of business or, or got laid off, fired, or whatever you want to call it from that carrier, you might have also jeopardized everyone else at that carrier. So just keep that in mind when you pick up the phone and you talk to the broker, because they will go on 411. They will report carriers. One guy can mess that up. Just one guy. God forbid it's their direct customer. So keep that in mind. Keep your mouth shut. If you want, you can come on YouTube and sort of talk as much crap as you want, but hey, the shipper might still see it, or your carrier might see it. Sometimes it's better in life, just keep your mouth shut. All right, number five. If you can't put your, uh, you can either put your authority on hold if your costs are too high or start shopping. Shop for new insurance, shop for new, um, new factors. Uh, if you're factoring, shop for a new factory. Uh, you could also, Maybe even try to change your fuel cards. These are all options. You could also possibly, you know, if you have your own authority, get rid of all this stuff and try doing it yourself. You got per permit places you're paying, safety uh, uh, safety audit places. Um, get rid of them. If you can do it yourself, if, you, if you've done it long enough, you might have bought it when you first started. Now that you have the hang of it, maybe you can try to get rid of some of these costs. They do add up, especially if you have multiple drivers. Uh, same thing, you know, if you have drivers, maybe you're paying them through a uh, paycheck service. If you think you can get rid of them, go ahead and do it. Every, every bit counts. It all adds up. Now, with your authority, you can do things a little differently. Like I said, you could easily secure your own customers. That being said, if you're leased on to somebody... And it's a 50-50 shot you can get a hold of somebody, you know, unless they're willing, unless the authority you're leased onto is willing to, you know, connect the dots for you and, you know, commit to letting you service that direct customer that you found. Uh, number, I guess we're on number six here. All right, number six, another way to save money. If you have to, put your authority on hold and go lease on to a carrier that has direct freight. Around those lines is pretty much what I did. I didn't have my authority, but I left the carrier that I kind of know them a little kind of personally before, at least, the, at least the guy that manages the place. But I left. They just, uh, they had too many drivers, too many trucks. They did have direct customers, but they were running a lot of spot market. They did what everyone else did. They went for the money, and the money dropped very quickly. I figured by sometime 2023, we might see a gradual slope of what happened with the rates. Apparently that didn't happen. It just turned over a few, like two or three months. It was done. That was it. Now I'm not saying that there's still not good rates out there. It's just the whether or not you're one of the lucky ones that got it. You're either one of the lucky ones that got a direct customer. Everyone else, they're left in the bag because not only, basically freight volume dropped also. Hence what I said about in the beginning about the economy. So, you have excess amount of owner-operators and authorities. Uh, you don't have much freight moving. You have an excess amount of brokerages, too. They all did the same thing. You, you've you been on YouTube. Just search YouTube. Everyone's doing the same thing. So now, you know, everyone's playing that hustle game. 
Either they're hustling on YouTube and trying to get the money from you paying for their programs and their information and classes, or they're just hustling to get you to sign on to their carrier or whatnot. So basically we had an influx of, I don't know, you can't call it over capacity. Well, I guess, yeah, you call it over capacity in, in every sense. The only thing though is we don't have any freight now. So it's just like the, like with the dollar. Money printer go brr, dollar becomes you know less valuable. There's more out there. Same thing happening right now with owner operators, uh, lease drivers, carriers, brokerages, brokers, the whole nine yards. Factoring companies, they they also all of a sudden sprung up too. Now all that all that happened because everybody was going for the money. So that being said, uh the real the real what this is going to be is a waiting game whoever can last the longest that's that's basically what this is going to be there's going to be a lot of carriers a lot of owner operators that are going to go under uh if you watch already on youtube there's a few uh people that do repo the repo and brand new volvos from companies kicking the drivers out having to get having to pay for the companies drivers hotel because they feel bad that they're repoing the truck and the driver their company don't want to pay for the hotel or probably can't afford it who knows or probably assumes that they're going to quit anyway once the, you know if you're a driver and your truck got repoed if you stay with that company it's <laughs> that's all on you <sighs> let's see am i missing something here i didn't exactly make a checklist this is all going off my head I do have a sinus infection right now, so I'm just trying to make some good content, trying to save save some people's businesses, just like I'm trying to save mine right now. I'm in the same boat as everyone else. I should have I should have changed, like I said, I stayed with that one carrier. I should have changed earlier and got right now with with a direct carrier. I haul direct for a carrier. I haul Tyson. I get paid by the mile. I have no, you know, I, I cut my costs. I cut my cost. I might have cut my rate, but I cut all my costs. <laughs> I have nothing in costs, really. I run for my mileage pay, and that's what I get paid. And it's not a dollar a mile. It's up over $2 a mile. Plus, fuel surcharge is $0.70. Cents, and I'm getting $1.50 off the pump price, uh, cash pump price of most of these truck stops. Especially Pilot and Flying J and stuff like that. So that's what I did. Do I want to do reefer? Not really. Uh, am I am I really doing the reefer game? Am I sitting at shippers and stuff for eight or nine hours? No. No, I'm not. Most of these are drop and hook trailers, or I end up going to Walmart. I mean, I'm sure there's other customers where I might have to sit for six hours, but guess what? I get paid detention after two hours. It's uh, $40, uh, $30 an hour. It's $30 an hour. It still adds up. It's better than nothing. I don't run the truck when I'm sitting around unless it's super cold out or super hot. It's 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 better than nothing. Yeah. You might want to say, you know, I should be paying, getting paid sixty dollars an hour. Well, maybe I am. Maybe I am. I probably am. The carrier's probably taking that. Hey, they have to make money too. They're a business. They can, everybody just can't give you know, give their hand out for free. If you if you don't like that, you don't like the carrier you're working for, go get your own authority and go out there and get your own customers. As you can see right now, if you're watching this, I'm not trying to badmouth anybody. I'm not trying to belittle you. I'm trying to be a realist. You can see where that's getting some of these guys right now. If you're new and you're watching this, if you're thinking about buying a truck right now, this is not 2018, 2015. Um, well, the end of 2018, I should say, in the 19. This market is different. Sure. Our rate per mile for spot market freight has fallen to where you know it was from where the bug after the bug. But that being said, our costs have skyrocketed. Everything's gone up doubled. Tires, repairs, uh, labor costs. Uh, if you want to count, DOT is sinking their teeth in because not only are we hurting more for money, 
that a lot of these smaller towns, municipalities, maybe state or federal, they, they're worried about how they're going to get their raises and they're going after people with money. And supposedly that's us because we don't really count on the so-called voting, you know, we're not part of the voting spectrum, I guess. They don't target us for, for votes. So that's just, that's just the name of the game concerning that. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about buying a truck, don't do it. It's not, not a good time. Fuel's still high. All your other costs are high. It's, unless you have a giant bank account, you're pretty much doomed to fail. And if you have that large of a bank account, we're talking about like sixty to $100,000, this is not the market to invest into. If you want to wait and you want to be a truck driver, wait until it comes back a little bit better or things change. Then do it. Because there's not high profit margins in trucking. There never was. Except for last year. But then again, if you got in it later, you paid for that. You paid that high truck payment. You paid for that high trailer payment. You paid for that. So did you really did you really profit more or no? Now other people that help that were able to hang in there through through the bug and when everything was shut down, they made out like a killing. And as long as you didn't blow your debt up trying to grow bigger to make that extra money, you're probably hot you're probably high in the hog right now. You're probably not even on YouTube. You're just closed your mouth doing your thing. And that's great. That's called great business you know that's called being a businessman so we're gonna wrap it up it's 21 minutes of me rambling uh, like I said I'm no genius I'm just trying to survive like everybody else I made I made decisions that like I said I went in a reefer I might not really wanted to do but it's not that bad I still got this old truck I still got a low payment you know I'm still going like I said there's little decisions that even I made I, I, didn't, I wanted a pre-emissions truck. That being said, it came with a caveat. I had a lot of breakdowns, things that I could kind of fix and couldn't kind of, and could not fix. I still had to pay money for, and it's been relentless because nobody took care of this truck before I got it. It was very well cleaned up, and uh, yeah, and I just wanted to start out making money. I should have thought about it a little bit, but I basically said to myself, if I didn't take this truck, somebody else is going to take it because that's the way the market was, and I was gonna be left out in the cold because prices were skyrocketing. Did I pay too much for this? This truck was $25,000. I put $5,000 down. I still had $20,000 in a maintenance count. I blew through that money. Tires, thing, the unexpected things, and unexpected things at home. And sure, there are things that, you know, I didn't have to do. Wifey planned a Disney World trip. Uh, that was about $10,000. You know, we didn't have to spend that money. You know, that would have left me with some wiggle room. At least with between, you know, bit, like I said, you split your business and your family finances up. I have a business account. You split them up and you decide how you want to approach it. Are you going to take any savings? If your business starts failing and you run out of cash, are you going to take your personal savings and try to keep that business going? Right now, I'm on the teeter turn point where I would like to, but me and my wife made a deal that this is it, and that's what it is. So I'm basically flat broke right now. If let's say I blew, let's say I had four blowouts right now, I'd have to do some talking and might be able to take some extra money out and do stuff, but I mean, I might not, uh, I might not be giving her any back rubs at night for a while, if you know what I mean. So that's that's where I am right now. So it is what it is. I'm not, I don't know everything. To be honest, if you want to really find out, I'm going to shout out two channels that, that I would say you should be watching. DIY Semi and Cash is King Trucking. They're both making it. One's has, one has their own authority, has, has their own a uh, little small fleet and he's making it the other one is leased to a carrier that is cash and he's making it they basically didn't get in a lot of debt they did not jump on the bandwagon and you know try to justify 
buying new trucks, uh, growing too fast because the money was out there. They, they took it easy. They've seen this happen before, just not to this extent. Like I said, I thought, even I thought this would plateau a little bit slower than it did, you know, or go down slower than it did. So that being said, if you wanted, you know, I'm sorry that you had to listen to my ramblings for 25 minutes, but this is the kind of content I'd like to try to make. There is hope out there. If you're really, you know, business minded, you can do this. The problem though is you have to be concentrating on your business and you want to have to succeed. If you already have doubts, if you're already like, I'm just going to let the truck get repoed. If that's like, you know, you're just moving through the motions. Stop right now. It's just going to get worse for you. Try to, try to give the truck back, you know, anything. Try to sell it. You're just going to make problems worse for yourself. Try to find a different, either get into a different career field, uh, become a company driver. Don't put yourself through that stress. Don't put your family through that stress. There are other things that are worth more than trucking, worth more than your business. Worth, you know, not only may you just give up on, you know, your truck and, and credit cards and whatnot, you may end up losing more than just your truck and your credit cards if you're, let's say, family man. Because there's only so much that they can put up with too. So, I don't want to try to get personal there, but that's just the truth. You know, think about that. So, now that I kind of kind of put it in a bad mode, there is hope out there. I'm making it. In fact, I haven't got my check yet because I'm only one week into this. But, from my calculations, I'll probably end up grossing between, now, this is just between two points because I don't, you know, can't count on everything. Between six to eight thousand dollars running dedicated, and I've only maybe done 20, 2,400 miles. Uh, so that's not too bad. It's been all light loads for the most part. I count thirty-five to thirty-four, you know, kind of light considering I did flatbed. So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna get off here before I keep going. This is Jackknife TV. You know, please like and subscribe. You know, if you have any, if you you know want to try to uh, get a question answered or whatnot, you can email me at jackknife.tv.info at gmail.com. Uh, you can also do it right here in the comments, and you know, suggest some videos to you know to me. I'll I'll try to do something, you know, around the lines of anything you really want besides you know getting naked. <laughs> so I can talk about the truck. I can talk about things that are busted on. I can talk about how crappy it looks, how old it looks. I can talk about uh, reefer, flatbed, uh, oversize, you name it. I can help you out. I might not, if I don't know the answers, I'll try to put you in a direction that, you know, somebody that can or, or an article or whatnot. So stay safe out there, persevere, and, you know, Make, make the right decision for yourself and your family.